Remember, when we have as many outputs as inputs, then we can visualize this as a vector field. So this is an example of a vector field because the function f here has two inputs. Um, they're x and y, right? And then it turns into another, another uh, pair of inputs. Also happens to be the same value. So in order to graph this, we could think about it by hand in terms of um, the input and the output of the function. We could make up some pairs here. Let's say uh, if the input is 1, 1, then the output is also 1, 1, just following this recipe. Whatever the first number is, that's going to be the first number in the output. Whatever the second number is, that's going to be the second number in the output. Okay, uh, or 2, 1, that would have output 2, 1, or um, 1, negative 1, the output would be 1, negative 1. If you were at negative 1, negative 2, then the output would be negative 1, negative 2. This is a very simple vector field. Let's plot some of these points. Maybe if we could, um, oh, let's maybe make another one, negative 1, 1, so negative 1, 1. Remember, the way we plot a vector field is um, we start at the, the location of the input, and then we, we draw a vector in the direction of the output. So, um, so starting at the location 1, 1, we draw a vector that goes over 1 and out 1. So starting at the location 2, 1, we draw a vector that goes over 2 and up 1. And then so on here, starting at the vector 1, negative 1. So 1, negative 1 would be down here. We're going to draw a vector that goes over 1 and down 1. So let's see, negative 1, negative 2. So back 1, down 2. We have a vector that goes back 1, down 2. Um, negative 1, 1. It's right here. We have a vector that goes out. Notice that the vector that we have is always the same as the vector that would take you from the origin to that point. So that vector always points away from the origin. We have a, vec a vector field then. If we were to, we can kind of see how this would complete, right? We always have a vector. We always have the vector that would carry you from the origin to your location. We have that vector again. And so we have a, a vector field here that is radial in the sense that it radiates out um, from the center here. Um, we could also use maple to, um, to plot this vector field. So if we want to use maple to do that, here are the commands that we would use. We would start with, um, start by loading the, the plotting package. So, so we'll load the plotting package with plots. Um, one of the commands we get with, with this plotting package is field plot. So that's field plot here is for plotting vector fields. Okay, so the command goes like this, field plot, and then you put in the vector field, our vector field. Um, the output is just x and y. And we just give like a range here for the x and y values, maybe from negative 2 to 2, and y from negative 2 to 2 will do and we see our radial vector field. Now one thing that field plot does is it rescales the vectors. You notice in our original drawing here the vectors are getting longer and longer and so um, if we drew in enough vectors the vectors would start to cross each other and get a little bit confusing. So what get a little bit confusing so what Maple does is to, to rescale them so that they have less chance of crossing. But you can see as you go out the vectors are, are stronger. Um, they're longer, right? So you could think about this as, um, oh, maybe like a fluid flowing out, and for some reason it's flowing out faster the further it gets from from the origin. Okay, let's do another one. So, in this vector field, if we go to, if we make a table of values here, the equation just gives me a recipe. If I start with two values x and y, then the value I get out, the first term is the opposite of the y value and the second term is the x value. So if I started with the point 1, 1, then I would get out negative y, x, that would be negative 1, 1. But if I started with the point um, 1, negative 1, then I would get out, let's see, the opposite of negative 1 is 1, and then I get my x value. 
If I start with the point negative 1, negative 1, I would get out 1, negative 1. Um, if I started with the point uh, negative 1, positive 1, then I would get out negative 1, negative 1. And we can see what's going on in this vector field. If we look at it. Um, at 1, 1, we have a vector that goes back and up. So a vector like this goes back 1, up 1. At 1, negative 1, we have a vector that goes forward 1, up 1. So we get a vector like this. And at negative 1, negative 1, that's over here, we have a vector that would go forward 1 and down 1. So forward 1 and down 1. And back here at negative 1, 1, we have a vector that goes back and down. So down, back 1 and down 1. If you keep putting vectors in here, you'll find that you get the vectors tend to sort of spin around in a circle. So this kind of field is, is a spin field. Watch what happens if I do this slightly different one. Maybe I'll call it g, another vector field. g of x, y equals, um, let's have it be y, negative x. We get, we could check the same points here. So for x, y, let's check y, negative x. We'll just do 1, 1 again, and 1, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 1. And so we get y negative x here. With 1, negative 1, we get y negative x. Um, y is negative 1, negative x is 1. y is 1, negative x is 1. If we plot the vector field with this new vector field, if we, if we look at it, 1, 1, so at this location, 1, 1, we have a vector that goes forward 1 and down 1. At 1, negative 1, we have a vector that goes uh, back 1 and down 1. Yes. At uh, negative 1, negative 1, we have a vector that goes back and up, back 1 and up 1. And at negative 1, 1, we have a vector, vector, vector that goes forward 1 and up 1. So we have another spin field. If you, if you were to continue to fill these in, you'd find these vectors that are moving sort of spinning around, but this time um, clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So these fields actually will come up quite a bit. Let's just plot those in Maple, see how we do it. Again, the, the command is field plot, and we just put in our vector field. The first time we had negative y and then x, so we got our vector field spinning um, counterclockwise. And then we changed this to a positive and that to a negative, And we got our vector field spinning clockwise.